Okay, yesterday we had a theme of a squared plus b squared equals c squared. We just went through those corrections, and today has a theme as well. And if I look at the objective, it's to find the measure of an inscribed angle and to find the measure of an angle formed by a tangent and a chord. And I tell you right now that that objective gets down to halvesies and doublesies. And people are like, what? Halvesies and doublesies. That's it. So we got an intercepted arc, an arc with endpoints on the sides of an inscribed angle and its other points in the interior of the angle. An intercepted arc. This angle right here intercepts this arc. It's the open area. Think Pac-Man, think alligator. It's eating the it's arc that's inside. If you want, if you're netting, you're catching the minnows that are in arc AB. Well, however, it'll help to know you're intercepting it. Okay. Now, an inscribed angle, okay, is an angle whose vertices is on the circle and whose sides are chords of the circle. And that was the red stuff I highlighted, but we'll highlight it again. This is an inscribed angle. The vertex of the angle must be on the circle if we're even to define it that way. Okay. And today's all about vertices of an angle on a circle. And the intercepted arc that intercepts is twice as big as the angle itself. And if I know the intercepted arc, I cut that in halvesies to get the angle measure. If I know the angle measure of the inscribed angle, I double it and get the arc. Okay, that's what today's notes boil down to. Halvesies and doublesies. Formally, the measure of angle B is half as big as the arc AC. So if this was 30, What's the angle? 15. That's it. And people are like, what? This whole chapter, I actually had a student last hour. I was like, boom, this is way easier than I thought. And it's like, it's all about you knowing vocabulary. You reread your notes. You connect the properties with the diagram. And it tells you what to do based on what you see. I have an inscribed angle, ABC. If I know the angle value, say it's, 25, I double that angle value. If this angle is 25, I would double that angle value and find that this is 50. Okay, that's all about inscribed arcs and, excuse me, inscribed angles and the arcs they intercept. Okay, so keep that in mind as we're going through. Have these and double these. And with that said, I want you to think about watching a big screen TV. The Bloom wish list. It'll never happen, but you can always have hope. The big screen TV as big as the wall in your family room. Dude, it would be like being, having your own movie theater in your house. But wouldn't the bottom part be useless? You'd have to do like three feet well, I have a 10 foot ceiling at least. <laughs> but you walk up to the TV because, you know, you got to put it on and you get blinded because of the light. Boom. And you look up and you look down because you're a foot from the TV and you look left and right. And it's like almost 180 degrees both ways, right? It's like, whoa. So, and able to get a really good watch of that monstrous TV. I got to walk back, right? And, you know, my room has got to be, yeah, about 15 feet. I think that'd be okay. At least. I got those big Dolby speakers on the side. Boom, 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 boom. And the heartbeat of my neighbors are changing because of them th suckers. And I'm looking at this and going, oh, I got to get back further. I need a new room. Okay. But the further back I go, how much does my head change now as I look at my TV? It's less, right? The angle's smaller. The further back I go, the angle is less. When we're doing these inscribed angles, the inscribed angle is further back than the central angle. That's why this inscribed angle is smaller than the central angle that defines the arc that's intercepted. And when I'm watching TV by myself, it's pretty easy, right? I can have the volume down. I can just relax until everybody starts coming in and having conversations or standing standing in front watching the TV in front of you right 
Yeah, but if they're in front of you, if you still you have that big TV. You have this big TV experience. You want to watch the whole thing. Why would you put up with a stick figure in your picture? Okay? And then you have a bunch of people going, a bunch of people getting together standing, and you're like, dude, I'm sitting right here. So you start bobbing and weaving to try to get the whole picture, right? The more people in your way, the harder it becomes just to watch TV. Well, the difficulty level of this material gets harder because I put more junk in it. I mean, this looks easy. That looks hard. So we got to start paying attention to the diagram. Let's talk about A. That's my arc, okay? If I have an angle that intercepts A, is it a half Z situations or a double Z? Which means if I have a vertex of an angle on the circle, the angle's half as big as the arc it intercepts. So if I double my 60, two times my angle, I get what? Are you okay that 60 times 2 is 120? So I've got 120 here for angle, my arc measure of A. Are you okay with how 120 was achieved? I'm not doing hard stuff. I mean, this is really akin to watching my big screen TV. It's harder to put turn on my big screen TV and not get blinded, okay, than to do this problem. But now, remember, we have arc addition postulate, which means that if you have two arcs that have the same endpoint, you can add them together. And in this case, I have these two arcs. And I'm adding them together to help me find angle B. So is it a half Z's or double Z's? Boom. What do you got? Half. Because I'm going from the intercepted arc to the little bitty bitty angle. Okay? So it's half as big. So I've got 150 for my arc measure, which means B has got to be 75. Now, with this idea in mind, and now that we've walked away from the more difficult problem on the page so far, do number two. Semicircle? How many degrees does that arc have? And what would the inscribed angle be if you took half of it? So if this is 180, are you okay? Doing all right? Now, remember, the more we have in front of us, the harder these become. But if you just get going and start going through it and weeding things out, it becomes easier. What I'd like you to do is find, or at least in your head, find along with me, the measure of angle A. What would I have to do first to help me find the measure of angle A? Get rid of that. I don't know what that's for. Ideas? Bloom? So you added 190 and you're dividing that sum by 2 to find A. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to add those together, we're going to divide, and we get 95. Okay? Does it make sense? Because you're all on. Get B, C, and D going. You want those inside angles. Go, 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 go. See what you know. If you got questions, ask them. Okay, get going. Get, get, get B, C, and D going. Find them. Find them. Find B, C, and D. Remember, this is about reading a diagram and applying a property. We have inscribed angles that are half as big as the arcs they intercept. Or we have arcs who are twice as big as the angles intercepting them. Bless you.
Right. Get them done, get them done, get them done. You guys are finding them. Get them done, get them done. Make sure you're happy with them. Good, bad, ugly. Okay, good. Okie dokie. Now, keep in mind, as you step around, it's just one thing after another. It's not just fast right away. you got to do a little bit of setup. But once you get going, it's quick. B, do you see 64 plus 90 is 154? It's 64 and 90. I get 154. That's what I'm doing. I'm going to divide by 2. 77. That's it. Okay, that's B. If I'm doing angle C, angle C is going along here. It's here and here. That's 106 and 64. That's 170. I cut that puppy in half. I get 85. Okay, it's the same methodology, but the method comes down to one thing, halvesies or doublesies. Inscribed angles, half the size of the arcs in the intercept, halvesies. Arcs that are intercepted are twice as big as the angles intercepting them. So in D, I got 106, 100. Half of 206 is 103. So I got the measure of angle D is 103. Okay. Now, if you write that information into the diagram, and people are like, what? What do you mean write it in? Angle B was 77. And angle D was 103. Angle A was 95. And angle C was 85. Read problem four. As I read out loud. In problem three, what do you notice about the sums of the measures of the opposite angles? And I just gave you a color coding to know what opposite angles are. Hold on. I want somebody else. Maybe. Possibly. I might just pick on somebody who's half asleep, Stanky. What do you got? <laughs> they add to 180. It's not just a coinky dink. It works like this the whole time. So now I've got this. They are supplementary. Okay. That's a fact, Jack. And the beauty about these facts is they're in your notes and we get to reread them. It's not that you become like this math magician. You know properties, theorems, postulates, and you can read the diagram. You know what you're given, and you can quickly find the answer. But if you don't do the rereading, you don't know the vocabulary, you can't find the answers. So what we've got next is we're really doing kind of a recap of what we just learned about corollary 2 and corollary 3. We did those two problems. Okay. Corollary 1 is kind of an extension of things. And I'm going to show you right now because people go, what? What's the deal? If I have an arc that is intercepted by two different angles intercepting the same arc, those angles are the same. And people are like, I can just read this. If I know that this is 35 degrees. I am not going to double 35 and get the 70 and cut it in half and do that. I know this is 35 degrees too. Automatically, because of properties right here. Okay? And people are like, well, what do you say? Hey, if I want you to explain myself, I'm going to say, hey, an inscribed angle intercepting the same arc as another inscribed angle, they're the same angle measure. Okay? You should be able to paraphrase that. That's how no well you're going to know the material because, folks, when you don't reread this material, when you don't practice it on a regular basis, you know enough to be dangerous and confuse yourself. And you'll be doing all sorts of wrong stuff to make a problem seem like it's the right answer. Make sure you're careful. We just did this one. When I have a diameter and an inscribed angle and it make, has endpoints at the diameter, it makes a 90 degrees. Well, well that makes sense because that's 180. Last one. Opposite angles in a quadrilateral, that's been circumscribed like that, are supplementary. Okay, as we go through. Now, five, A, B, and C. You should be able to do them quickly. Go.
Now, this is about your debrief of what we just did because these are directly related to the three properties at the top of the page and the four problems we just did to set up those three properties. Get them all done. Put your answers in there. Put your answers in there. Remember, this is a self quiz. Right now, you should be able to get these done. If you don't, you should be asking questions. Nice. Keep it up. Nice. Are you winning? After you finish the top three, go ahead and do the next three because it's the same stuff, just kind of regurgitated. And after you finish those, check your bottom three, your D, E, F, with a person next to you. Check it with a person next to you. Okay, so let's get this show on the road. Inscribed angle, endpoints of a diameter, 90 degrees. I don't need anything else. I'm done. If I wanted to, sure, I could have gone, that's 35, that's 20. After that's 35, I could totally talk about this being 55 because of it being the sums of all three angles inside a triangle being 180. But I asked to find just one thing, and that's it. Okay? And the second one, 70, nice, unimportant. Okay, 38 is right here, that's 76. Well, hey, that intercepts the same arc because when we're doing this, I'm looking at angle two is intercepting the same arc that is intercepted by that 38 degrees. 38 degrees is done. Okay, now it isn't about the difficulty of math. It's about knowing properties, reading a diagram, practicing this, and applying it. Okay, it actually means you have to recursively go over and over and over and over again. Okay, period. C, one and two, or excuse me, one and three, 90 degrees apiece. Just looking at it. That's the diameter. Okay, when I'm talking about four, this is 140 degrees. Half of that, 70 degrees. When I'm talking about two, two and four are supplementary. Two is 110. I regurgitated properties. I got an answer based on properties. Not because I did something really hard. It's because I knew something that I reread. I identified with a diagram, and I can read from the diagram consistently because I do it over and over again. Make sure you do the same thing in D and E and F. Get them done. See what's going on. I have people who are just a little bit behind on that. Remember, this is our practice time. You want to see the difficulty of this assignment? You're looking at it. It's just knowing properties. Once you know the properties, we've got answers. Okay. The right answers are found knowing how the properties in the diagram interrelate. It's no harder than you make it on yourself by doing the rereading of your notes and learning them or not. And then asking follow-up questions to make sure you're on the right track if you need to. Did these go okay? This one? Yeah. This one go okay? Same angle. This arc intercepts this angle too, right? So, so this this would be make this 76, right? Because double that. 
but half of it makes it this, so these angles are the same. So a two's got to be 38. So what angles in that second one here both show that it has a different side? It really comes down to, it's not about what goes, it's, this is the inscribed angle. Okay. Twice this angle is that arc. So you got 76, right? But half of that goes back there. But it's not just anything goes over. It's not a, it's just the relationship between the angle and the arc that's intersecting. Okay? Do you feel that that's what you just said to me? I just want to make sure. Okay? I don't have to double it. If I know it's the same arc that's being intercepted, I can skip this and just know that's going to be 38. Because if I double this, I'll get 76, and then i got to cut it in half. Okay? Yeah, but really, I've got to make sure, because sometimes, depending on what it is, I could be given this information, and this two could be over here. So I've got to be careful about that. i got to be able to read the diagram and know what they're asking me in the diagram itself. Okay. So again, the three properties at the top of the page. I'm not doing anything different than applying those. Okay, how did I learn it? I read the three properties, I looked at the diagram, and I applied them. And I checked. Okay, that's it. When at first you don't succeed, reread again. Five to seven times isn't unheard of. Diameter. B is 90 right off the bat. Should know that right away. Okay, an inscribed angle with endpoints on the diameter is 90 degrees. That's the middle property at your top of your page. Okay. A, we don't know anything about yet until we see this 122. Okay. 122, 180 minus 122 gives me a 58. That is my value for A. A is equal to 180 minus 122 because this is the diameter. That's a half circle. Okay. Now, my last one. C intercepts 122. 61. How you doing? Going okay? It's all about the three properties at the top of the page. It's all about the properties of inscribed angles that we've covered so far. Okay? Being a participant in the learning process. Participate as opposed to just watch is important today. This is important for every day, but if you're not, it's really difficult. This is 76. It actually is intercepted by angle A, and it is also intercepted by angle B, which means A and B must be the same answer because they intercept the same arc that's going to get cut in half, 38 degrees. Okay? You all right with what I did? An F, the first part of the property, opposite angles in a quadrilateral are supplementary. 180. 92 to get to B. B is equal to 180 minus 92. I get 88. To get A, I got 180 minus 108. I get 72. Any questions about those two values? Where were they? Top right of the pop to page, right there in front of us. Okay? Now, how do we know about this? We reread. C is my next one I'm going to go after. 108 intercepts that arc. This blue arc is a total of 216 because it's 88. Excuse me, 108 times 2, sorry. 108 times 2. Okay. Now, this total is 216. To find C, it's 216 minus 114. So it's 102, right? So I got this is 102. C was 216. Minus 114. When I find D, and it's all I'm doing is applying the properties 
that I have at the top of the page. Remember, when I'm finding my last one D and I just erased everything, so I'm just going to put a couple things back in, that's 72. Well, that's not going to be really helpful because I don't have anything over here. So I'm not going to use that one. Okay, But I am going to use angle B, and that one was 88. So that's 88. Okay, 176. I just found C, okay, and that was 102. So 176 minus 102 is 74. Yep, so D is 176 minus 102, which gives me a 74. And this one was 102. Now, it's an application of the properties. Okay, if I have a vertex on the circle, half the arc that's intercept is the angle value. Double the angle is the arc it's intercepting. Now, I have one thing left as we go on through on this. Keep in mind this last idea is about chords becoming tangents. I want to, let's pretend I got a flip book. Who knows what a flip book is? You put little pictures on it and you fan it and it looks like it's a cartoon or something as you fan through because you see the play. Different shapes here. A keeps flying through. It keeps moving across here. It keeps moving from where it starts to C. Okay? And the purpose of this is for you to know that this is the same angle. Half this is that angle. Half this is still that angle. Half this is still that angle. B and C haven't changed. Half this is still this angle. Except now A went from a vertex made by two chords or two secants to a tangent in the secant. It's still the same. If I have the vertex of an angle on the circle, the rule is half the measure of the arc intercepted is the angle. That's all it is. That's why we're presenting them on the same day. It's the same idea. When you have a vertex of an angle on the circle, that angle values half the measure of the arc it intercepts. Okay. So I've got two problems left and a self quiz for you. And let's see if we can get that done a little differently here. So as we're going through, I have an arc measure, and if you would, please put in that arc. I didn't have it on your notes. Please put that arc in, PMQ, because it's got to be arc PMQ. Arc PMQ goes in. This is 212. Okay. I need this angle. It is your turn because this is an extension of what we've been doing. It's still kind of the same as far as take the angle, cut it in arc measure, cut the arc measure in half to find the angle value. Give it a try. Go. Go, 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 go. Total degree measure in a circle. Think about it. What is it? 360, right? So what ain't red up there has got to be what's left of 360. Yeah, maybe. Uh, yeah, I like, I like it. Yeah, looks, super. looks great. Nice job. Now, there's a couple ways of doing this problem. Half of 212 is 106. But is that the angle I'm supposed to find? Isn't SQR a straight angle? How many degrees does a straight angle have? 180. So if I found the difference between 180 and 106, I should get my answer. 74. A second way of doing it, because that's not the only way. There's two ways on this one. 360 minus 212 is 148. Half of 148, guess what? 74. I always get the students go, oh, I did a different. Same property. Okay? Same property. They're consist consistently the same way to do it to me. Okay? This is 74 degrees. Now, again, the more stuff I put in your way, the harder the problem. 
it becomes more of a you reading the diagram and knowing properties. Check it out. If I just pay attention to that triangle, what's Y? It's a right triangle, right? Yeah, it's 35 suddenly. You see it because this is 90 because it in intercepts a diagonal. Uh, <laughs> not a diagonal. What's the word I'm thinking about? The D word. It's not a radius. Diameter, thank you. Good Lord, I'm having a day. Okay, so I got a diameter going across there. So keep in mind, as we're going, 35 and Y are the acute angles. They must add up to 90 degrees. So Y has got to be 55 degrees. Are you okay with that? Now, it looks really nasty, horrible, but it's not because we had two angles intercepting the same arc are the same value. Check it out. You see that arc? This angle intercepts it. Let's pull that away. This angle intercepts it. It's an angle whose vertex is on the circle. The arc that intercepts is twice as big as the angle. If they intercept the same arc, they're supposed to be the same. So I've got X is 35. So you guys have a self quiz. Go ahead and get that going. And I'll talk to Kev. Kev, you, you're in back here. And I've got that stuff back there for you. Um, the yellow. The yellow back there. It's to your left. Yep, should be right there. That's today's notes. Okay. All right, good luck today. Stay warm. Hey, welcome, sir. Hey, enjoy this meet. That'll be fun. It'll be fun watching those guys. It's like being at the state meet today. And everything else is on Schoology. I will. I will. I'll do the same thing I'm doing this hour. Now, your self quiz. It should be quick. Hopefully, you see the arc that intercepts A, BCD. The angle that intercepts BCD, it's angle D, ADC. And the angles of the quadrilateral A, B, C, D are supplementary. Well, the opposite angle should be supplementary. It is just you regurgitating information. Okay, just you regurgitating. Okay, today's assignment, if you know the properties, takes less than seven minutes to do. If you don't know the properties, you got to look them up. It'll, that's the thing that will slow you down. If you have questions, make sure you ask because I've got news for you. The less you know, the more confusing this material is. I always get people go, I don't get this, I don't get this. And it's really based on you rereading your notes and recognizing things. So keep that in mind as you're going.